Okay, so I said yesterday, somebody asked um, when are we supposed to um, create our spy guy? Is it at the mid-fidelity level or high-fidelity level? And I said you can create it at any time. But the best is to create it at mid-fidelity. At least start at mid-fidelity. When you get to high-fidelity, you don't need to start um, looking or wasting time for looking for resources or the right icon or like right right illustration to use. But once you start creating your mid fidelity, at least start with the font, the button, your input field, and maybe you can stop there. But once you start doing your high fidelity, then you have to complete it. And um, high fidelity, um, creating your style guide is not something that you cannot reduce or you cannot remove or add. You can just the same way we did for Flowchart. Flowchart is something that you need to create a navigation, a roadmap for your project. And in case there are some say, solution you want to add, you can go back to make an adjustment. That's how um, Style Guide 2 is. So yesterday we started creating our visual design techniques element and uh, we, we named, we, um, we have some some examples and we have created one and we start we con we created the second one so today we are going to complete it and i thought to you how to generate and I, I i picked this particular color for our food app and i thought you how to use a plugin to generate other colors from this particular shade of um, color and the plugin is actually called tint and shade and we are going to complete our color now so we've created our, our family our primary color so here we need just one color so there's no need for secondary color you know we all know what secondary color is a second color that just plain let's see what to use um is you when creating a project and you already have a logo for that project just like when i showed you one of my project like that that has two color blue and green and i told you the okay let's look at and i told you um a color like that i told you we have blue and green and the blue is the primary color why the green is the um, secondary color so that's how it is but if you Color. There's no need for creating another color. All you just have to do is the primary color, go straight to the dark colors, and then you have your white colors. So then you have this. So we're going to create our dark colors. So I reduce this frame. Okay, so we're going to create our dark color. So I'm just going to um look at what the example or the yeah, example of what we are creating. So I told you we are just going to create something like this. You know, I, I showed you three, this project, I did different pattern and styles of my um, style guide. And I said, I was just going to use the three of random. So we've created our primary. So this is where I'm getting my examples from. We've created our primary color. So the next color we are going to create is our dark colors. We are going to have dark color The, the, we have to use the darker gray and lighter gray, and then we have our white. So we're going to pick our colors from um, from this these colors that we have generated. So this is where we are going to pick our color. So um, the, I, I, uh, I'm going to add this particular brown because it might be useful, maybe for like a time two text you get it might be useful so i'm just going to add it so we're going to have um this brown which is the darker shade of this that's here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come here keep my rectangle and create it here so i'm going to create my dark i'm going to come here and do this thing 
So I have my brown. So I'm just going to give it the same curve, like yeah, 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 and yeah should be curve, and just here should be edge. So I'm just going to place it here, and I'm going to give it a corner already. So I'm going to you can come here to just adjust it this way. But once you adjust it this way, every other part um moves together. But now I just want only one, two, three to move, and yes, just remain the sharp end. So I'm going to come to this place, this independent uh, corners. I'll click it. Now this is how it's going to show me. So this place is zero. That place is. So I'm going to push it this way. So here is zero, zero, zero. So I'm just. We're already using um fifty, but since this is actually looking smaller, I don't think we're going to use fifty because if we use fifty here. It's actually going to be very very curvy so i'm just going to use 20 here yeah, and 20 yeah. you can just choose to make your own just the normal rectangle or square shape but i just want to make it look so beautiful i just want my side guy to look beautiful that's why i'm just adding coloring but if you don't want to add anything at all just add a block you know just you can just add block like that like um sorry a rectangle or square and just move it that way so i'm going to pick this shade of brown here yeah? so i'm just going to use my color picker pick that i'm going to duplicate that here yeah? and this is going to be the, my shade of black so i'm going to this is going to be my shade of black so i'm not going to use the normal black code zero 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 which is the normal normal black I'm just going to use another shade of black. It's dark though, but it's just going to be another shade of black. So I'm going to make here. Um, so here is going to be my dark gray. My dark gray. Here is going to be my light gray, and here is going to be my lighter shade of gray, and this is going to be my white. So we already know the color of white. F F F six times is white. Like this. So once I, um, so once I get my lighter shade of gray, I'm just going to change this black, black, black to this. My stroke is black. So can you guys still hear me? Yes, my we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you. So I'm just praying. Okay, so I'm going to pick. So let me zoom in. So I'm going to pick my um dark gray. I'm going to pick my. I'm going to pick my. So I'm just going. This four. So I'm just going to. Drag it this way so that you can pass on where, where I'm designing do it, picking my color. So I'm just going to bring it inside here to pick my lighter shade of gray. And this is going to be like the 20% of this gray. And this is going to be this and this almost look. see okay so let's see 40 i think 40 is okay and let's see 30 for this okay remember you can you can change Try um adding something like maybe use the dummy text just to see how it turns out to be if the color are too light. So I'm not going to pick this color to see how it is. So I'm going to set um 18 text like a slip text. Let's go to 12 regular to see how it looks like. If I just use regular text to test test how the color turn out to be for Oh. 
you get. So you can just see this one. Okay, I think the colors I picked are good enough for body text. So I'm just going to take this. You know, we added black this. So I'm just going to use the, uh, sorry. So I'm just going to change this stroke. Like the stroke is black. I'm going to remove the color and then pick this lighter color. So if you want to reduce it, you can go ahead and reduce. So this is going to be like 0 0.5. Just want it to be same but if you don't want you can go ahead and leave it with one i think I'll, i since i'm not using um zero 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 as my color code for the black i think i'll have to just play along with the dark colors i have i, mean, I am using so yeah i'm going to drop the um color code drop it. i'm going to pick this so i'm going to pick this and just add the colors here so i'll do same thing for this place so i'll pick the color here so yeah i will add it here so i'll come here to Get this color. Let's add it here. Going to pick this color. And then add it here. So going to pick this color. So we already know we are using F F. So I have created all my dark colors. So I'm going to, you know, primary. So we already have this here. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Bring this here. So this is going to be dark colors. This is going to be dark colors like this and this is our primary this is our dark so the next thing we are going to create we are going to create our um our alert button the success warning and error so that's what we are going to create so let's create our safety color so once we create our status color we are going to create them as a local style the same way we did for this text style. So let's create them and then we link them as our local styles. So here we are going to change this to status color. A lot of status color. You can call it a new one. So I'm just going to duplicate this three here. Then I have to bring it down. Our uh, status color we have okay. to have error and then one. So I'm going to use the um, green color. So all I have to do is just to come here and move this and then move this. Yeah. So we have this green color. I'll just pick the color code instantly and then paste it. So this is going to be um warning so warning is yellow color so this is the yellow color here yeah. i'm going to take it off yeah so i'm so red is going to be here yeah. so we just have to move this here yeah. then you pick the color this time here. Yeah, 
success warning and error so we're going to create them as local styles so what we are going to do so if you are done you can just choose to you know um frame them or make an auto layout just to have the color code and the text together if you don't want your work to be scatter so i'm going to add that once i'm done creating my local styles i'm going to make all of them um auto layout like one one together so let me create my dark color so i want to create my dark color so the same way we did for the textiles that's how we are going to do for this so i have this other shade for the primary So I'm also going to create that. So I'm going to um, color. This is the text so that the colors will appear. So I'm just going to create that. So I'm going to add, click on this um, styles and variable. I'm just going to click on this four dotted icon. I'll click on this. So once I click on this, this is how it's going to look like. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to make this as main color. So I make it main color, this is how it's going to look like. So once I'm done, remember once you're done creating your colors, you can just go ahead and just take this out. So I'm going to take that out and then concentrate in making, creating my color uh, for my local style. So I'm going to give this name. So you can just say, um, let's just call this, Primary color one. Let's see. Primary color one. I just give it any name you feel like you want to do, but just give it a name that you know, okay, this is the main one, and there are others on the like other colors, like other that related color or different shade of that particular color on that list. So that's what I'm just and then right. So oh, you can just give it any name you want to. So I'm just going to give this primary two. So this is going to be I three. Primary now, primary four. But we have primary three twice. So this is going to be primary five. Primary three twice. So uh what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come here. So let's close this. So I'm just going to come here to change it. So I'm just going to click like this, edit styles from here, remove the three and then add it four. Then click anywhere automatically it's reflect. So now I'm going to create it like this. Now this is what we have text. So you know we have the heading text and we have the body text like this. So we are going to do it this way. So what I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to right click, add new folders, and call this primary color, primary colors. And then the same way we just did, just come screw up, um, bring this one under, just bring this one under, bring this one under. Bring this one under it like this, just like that, just for it to be in order. So once we are done, we, are done. we can leave this and then we can come to the dark color. So for the dark color, we're just going to be the same, the same way. So I'm going to name this as, I'm going to name this as um, brown. So I'm just going to name it brown, no need of adding colors. I'm just going to name it brown. And this is going to be my black. So this is going to be black. So the next one is going to be my dark gray. So this is going to be my dark gray. This is going to be uh this is going to be light gray 
So this is going to be light gray. The next one is going to be lighter gray and Then we have uh, white. So you can just choose to make white different, stand on its own, or you can add it under the dark gray. So, but for now, I'm just going to add it inside. So it don't look like, you know, coming like this thing, it gets to this color. I'm just going to add it here. And this is going to be white color. So we have crazy, so I'm going to, the same way I color. So I'm just going to bring my black on that. So I'm going to scroll to see what I'm doing. We have the dark, we have the lights, we have the lighter, and then we have the white. So I have created my primary and dark color. So the next one I'm going to create is my status color. So this is just going to be success, um, warning, and error. So this is going to be success. So this is going to be warning. And this is going to be error. So I'm going to just do it the same way, right? Click add new folder. So this is going to be um let's just use the word alas. Alas color. And then you just drag like this, and then you drag it this way. You create, you create it. So you're, the next thing you're going to do is just to add all of them inside the folder. You right click, you create a new folder, and you call it colors. You call it colors. So once you create, create call it colors, you're just going to, I'm going to close this here. You're just going to drag this this way, and you drag this. this way and then return the primary color to be added so you can just place it anyway but i just feel i should make the primary these dark colors and then a last color so i have created my i have created my um textiles and my color so i have my on my local styles i have my textiles i also have my color styles and i have my grid system i'm going to use for the project so i already told you how to create the grid system which kept you for alignment and so i'm going to come back here and then make all these auto layout so i don't do so right click and then add auto layout so this is shift k so i'm going to come here with a this this shift k a is this shift k is this shift a so i'm going to hold the six of them together so i'm just going to Make the spacing between them six and then move them to the um, right. So I have moved them to the right, but these two has refused to turn to the right. I'm going to check why it didn't move. Okay, so I'm going to. So I don't need that space here. I'm just going to hold all of them and then make it somewhere else. So once I make it out somewhere else, automatically it moves to swap. So this is what I want. And I have this and just align it. So I'm just going to do the same here. This, this. Shift A, this, this. Shift A, this, this. So this one moves to the right. So I'm going to check if it's on the left. So it's already on the. I'm going to move to the left, to the right. Sorry. And then that's refused. That's is the setting is on the left, right hand side. But that means for it to be facing the left, that means there is space. I'm just going to scroll and then I'm going to click. Sorry. And then 
cover of the space. So I have created all my color um, size. So the next one I'm going to create now is, so can somebody tell me the next one I'm going to create for people that joined the class yesterday? Just drop a message and tell me which one is the next one we are going to create. No answer. So don't, nobody know the next one I'm going to create. Okay. Two persons are typing. Is Let's it see. great system? <laughs> Layers grid. I don't know. What is it? Shadows. No. What are the examples I gave you yesterday? Icon and illustration, okay? So there's another one. There's two more. There's two more. Uh, we've created layout grids. Remaining two more. Somebody has said icon and illustration. Remaining two more. Input feed and button. Exactly. Input feed and button. So. The next one we are going to create, we're just going to drop our layout grid. We're just going to do it again. Like we're going to drop it on, uh, so that, you know, remember we already created a local size of which only us is going to see, but we're going to drop the, um, of, of, we're going to drop the grid system that we use, or we are going to use for our design. And this project that we're designing is a food mobile application. So we're going to drop the grid system setting just like the example I showed you yesterday, we are going to drop it here. Now, this is what we are going to do. You know, when you set it, when you set it like this on your design, it is only you that is going to see it. Your developer is not going to see it. But now we're just going to just drop a design like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, a phone frame. So I'm going to use a phone frame. So I'm using iPhone 13 for our design. So I'm just going to bring it in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to set my layout grid. So I'm just, that, okay, for people that don't know how to set layout grid, I'm going to do that again. So now my front frame is white and I've added on a white background. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add stroke to it and I'm going to set, select my um, lighter gray color just to, you know, just to show you this. So but if, you, if you don't want to use lighter, you can use your darker color. So I'm just, okay, let's use light gray. Okay, let's use light gray. Light gray is better. So I'm just going to give it, um, maybe corner radius of 10. I'm not a fan of having sharp edge. Just a fan. So I always give top cover and uh, corner radius. X. The only thing I don't give corner radius is when I'm designing a, 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 a when I'm designing like, Apart, like when I'm designing for web view, like my whole landing page, my whole product page, I don't give. Any of those frame um, corners, I don't use, but every other thing, the button, the input, I don't frame, laptop, desktop, I don't, I don't do that. So I'm just going to give it corner radius here and I'm going to select my grid system. So I'm going to redo the grid system already. So I think what we do, so I'm just going to see what we use. So I'm going to edit just to see. So we use um, column of six, we use 25 and we use default settings for gutter. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to select here, I'm going to click on this. So this is how it's going to turn out to be. So I'm going to click on this settings here. I'm going to select these columns. I'm going to use count six. I'm going to use margin 20, margin 30, margin 30, right? Uh, let me check to be sure. Okay, 25. So I'm going to use um, 25. Share the file. 
not everybody will actually see what you did like this because you are the only one seeing it here except the the person have access to a deed and the person will say okay let me just see and not everybody will actually come here to see that you're the only one seeing it so what i'm going to do i'm just going to get my rectangle just to create this so i'm going to recreate this so i'm going to zoom in so we put this So once I create this, I'm just going to move this to this. So I'm going to arrange your results. So once I arrange your results, I see that it's actually not aligned very well. There are some tiny, tiny speed. So I'm going to hold this. Now use my arrow to so shift it to get to the position. So once I shift it to position, I'm just going to come here to adjust. I'm going to do the same for here. Use my arrow to adjust it. Yeah, okay, I got it. So I'm just going to make a example here. And then I can add auto layout to reach. So before you add auto layout, I'm going to um select a color. The layout we just have that they are great color, so I'm just going to then add a chili up. So I'm going to create this to I can turn it off. I already have my so I already have this um rectangle just to indicate like that. And then I'm going to come back here. Just if I just pick this from here. So I'm going to lock this. So I'm going to lock it because even though I move this text inside, it wanted to follow this text. So I'm going to lock it. I'm just going to bring this text here on top and I'm going to say is it right? I'm just going to place it this way. I'm going to say yeah. So imagine it's um Margin is 25. And I'm going to just bring this and then put it here. And then say quarter. Okay. So this is what I have. And so once I have this, I'll make sure that everything is actually inside that when I turn it off, I can see it. So when a developer comes to your file or your mentor comes to your file, he or she to see the, the settings of your page. So they are designing for um, they are designing for a, a, a web. You are going to set it that way. So I'm going to rename this to grid. So remember, once you are done setting it here, you can just create it as your local styles. Well, we already have it. That's why I'm not creating it as a local style. So we've already done that when we are doing our meet fidelity. But this is why I said this is why um you can start with some some of your like your grid system. You can start doing it. Your input feed you can do it. Your text you can just do it as maybe small small. When you start doing the high fidelity, then you can just complete it before doing your high fidelity. So the next thing we are going to create, we are going to, okay, this is going to be green. So the next one I'm going to use create is going to be um, illustrations and icon. So I'm just going to take this out. 
and she's going to be on illustration. Illustration and icon. So I'll make sure, oh, let me draw these specs here. Yeah. All right, done. We have my phone. So we have a plugin, a plugin of which I told you guys. So we have, we have the Iconify, Iconify, which is more like the popular icon pack that has different collections of icon. We have, um, Icon eight. We have the feather icon. We have um. We have um font awesome. So font awesome is this one. Okay, so I'm going to share the link with you. This the font on some is a nice font to use. A lot of icon on the Figma community. So I'm going to share. Or you just go to the I got this. Can you guys see hear me? Yes, my can you hear you. Okay. Um, I can <laughs> Okay, so I just shared um a link to a Figma file that has some sweets icons some awesome icons and it's called font awesome so i just shared it with you guys to go check it out um if you want to have access to edit on the file just go to the figma community to look for font, font awesome but before you have access to edit on those icons you have to download the fonts like you have to download the fonts you know the font for you to edit the icon if you want to edit the icon so that's it. so we are going to write add it here. So here we are going to add font awesome. This is going to be font awesome icon. So this is going to be font font awesome icon. So if you go to the community, there are a lot of icon, but this doesn't have feather icons. Doesn't have a lot of icon. I think the icon is less than. 200 or less than 100 i'm not sure but i know it's not much icon 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 8 has nice icon it has field house has nine icon iconify which is like the most popular icon that every designers are using has a lot of collections of icon even the feather icon the icon 8 what awesome they are all inside the iconify so of which we used when we are creating our mid fidelity how i think you how to add icon if you want to add icon or if you don't want to add icon then you are free or we did our first onboarding you know our first onboarding that we did some little prototype 
how I taught you how to use some how to use a particular collection of icon from iconify. So you have the fourth person. They just say these three uh, um, icons, icon collections are uh, inside this particular icon. Then for the illustration, so I'm going to move this icon here. I'm just going to move it to the right. And for illustration, we have so many places of getting illustration, both free, paid, both, both free and paid. And you can get from the Figma community. You can get 2D, 3D from the Figma community. Get You can get from there. You can get free or paid from the Figma community. You can get from OnDraw. OnDraw is actually a nice 2D. OnDraw is cool. It's a nice 2D site where you can get illustration from. You can change the color if you want to. So we're just going to take a look at it and see how it is. So I'm going to say on draw. So while we are waiting for it to load, we have another icon called Story Sets. Story Sets is a nice icon that storyset.com. Yeah, storyset.com. So this is how on draw look like. So it's still loading. Let's open Story Sets. Storysets.com. So Storyset is um, an icon owned by Prefix, which you can actually change the color. So let's see if this app. Oh, this is open yet. Okay, it's still loading here. Yeah. So these icons are icons you can download as SVG, PNG. You can before you download as SVG, you can change the color here yeah, to add your color. Are you serious? Is it the only one that can't see my screen? I can see your screen now. Uh, thinking it's yellow. Yes. You can just go out and come back in. Can you guys see my screen now? No, it just went okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so um, this is on draw.co, a, a nice site where you can get illustration. The, word, the illustration doesn't have eye, nose, mouth, and face. You know, the face doesn't have, but you can change this color. Let's say, for example, I want to, let's just see this um, illustration. We want to use this illustration in our next design. You can choose to, you know, change, download as PNG or download as SVG. And if you download as the SVG, you can just come to your Figma and then make adjustment to the to the color you want. Maybe you want you don't want you want brown here yeah, and you want pink here yeah, and you want the face to be maybe yellow. You can just do that on your Figma. But if you just want to change, you know, the color they gave to us here yeah, is the purple. If you just want to change it, you can just come here. Let's go to our Figma and pick our primary color. So I'm just going to pick this color to show you something. So I can just come here and then add highlight and then paste my new color. You see that automatically this that's changed to the color I am using for my project. And then you can just click on it and then download as PNG or XVG. So the choice is yours. So that is one sweet thing about on draw.co. There's another illustration called story sets. So there's another illustration called story sets. Um, I think owned by Prefix. Or have they changed their name? Owned by Free Fix, which is actually nice. It has three styles. Sorry, it has uh, five styles of illustration. So we have these particular styles. So we have this particular styles. It's loading. We have this. Okay, we have this. Okay. So uh, I I don't know. It has these five styles. I don't know why it's network is delaying. So you can also change. You can change the color. You can come here to change the color. Come here and paste your color. I'll come here to paste the color. Let's see. Uh, come here to paste the color. So okay, this this, this is the color I'm using on Figma. So you can just come here to change your color. Hey, now look at this particular styles for this icon. 
this particular styles. Like these are the illustration. Like look at how the like all the human being look like the the, the humans uh, designs look like. We have this particular one. Pana. We have Pana, we have uh, Amiko, we have Blue, and we have um, Rafi, Rafiki. So we have all these five um, designs. So I, I, my network, I will just look for, let me just click on all, and we've changed the color. So you can also download as SVG or PNG, and you can choose to go, let's say you're looking for, um, um, let's say you're looking for a particular icon that say graduation, it's a happy woman or happy graduate or anything you want to use. And you see that the, the you're going to get the results, but you're going to get it in these five different styles. So you can just choose which of the style you want. So let's look for, let's look for something. Let's say sign up. Let's look for a sign up mobile um illustration or a welcome or something like that. Let us look for sign up or welcome. So let's look for let's just see the result that will come out. And then you see that you have one result that has the five different styles. So it's the fine. Time. Taking time to give the results. So this is how it looks like. You can scroll like this and automatically you have a side by here, or you can add go here. So it does go here. I love what so one thing that this tool said is you don't have search by here, but in the video section, automatically you just have like even if you just want to scroll, automatically you have a search bar. Okay, now this is um this is how it look like. So let's click on this particular illustration. Now you can tell this is the same when I click on this particular one. Well, this was the same result he gave to me, but it gave me different um sign. Now you can tell this is how it look like. Now you can tell how it has different you know, so when I click on this first tie, this is how the first one look like. Just this they are the same sign up. Then let's click on bro. This is how it look like. Let's click on this is how their style look like. Let's click on this uh, Amico. This is how Amico look like. Let's click on Pana. This is how Pana look like. And let's click on the last one. This is how this one look like. So most times I prefer using this one and um, this particular illustration. So yeah, they actually look mature. This one almost look like on draw, but the difference between this particular style and on draw is that on draw doesn't have a face, but this particular one have a face. So you could tell that this this particular story said, and you can download as SVG or PNG. So you can download as SVG or PNG, and it's free. Now look at this particular result I have. So you can tell, check out this style, check out this illustration, this particular illustration in other styles. So you can tell this is how it look like. They are just the same thing, but it has different styles. Okay, and you can change the color before you can download it. Just the same way we have for on draw. So the next one we are going to do, so you can get from some kind, you can get from as SVG or PNG from Figma community, you can get 2D or 3D from Figma community. The next one we have is, um, I think I actually saved a lot of them on my, right? so I have, um, I have this one, mm, I have this one too. So I have these two flexpay.com illustration. So this one, this one, I have this one too. So this is how this, no, not this, not this one. This is this is the wrong, it's a wrong sketch. This is a free uh, vector illustration. What is going on? So I have that other one. So I'm just going to drop the name for us here. So there are other places you can get illustration. There is another one called um there's another one called um um the link plus there's another one called um drop blush some are plugin some are in the Figma community so you can just go to Google and type then Google will give you um some site if you just come to Google and you type to the illustrations 
So if you come to yeah and type two D, sorry, two D illustrations. Not two. I I need the D. So wait now ahead. This was the one I was talking. They did draw kit. I somebody love the draw kit. You can use for your 3D or 2D. You can there is um illustration from prefix. They if you just And, um free pics but you can't change the picture there's vectory you can just go to um google this way and then google will just give you so many results so this is from figma um so you can just come to images like this sometimes to get some sites for illustration so once you come to like this you just see now look at this one graphic design for you look i i think i know draw kits so this is how draw kits look like depending the project that you want to add this so you can just come here look up now pixel 77 um uh, we, we know of in stock in stock are not um in stock are not i think adobe stock or shop stock i can't remember the name they are not free illustration they are just random illustration you can just get and it has watermark it has watermark that is not hidden it's visible like very very visible and all but Is something that we can work on in our designs, so I think it's not a free illustration. Now, you can tell this, this is this, this one just came out. I'm going to try out. There's other stuff, so there's some illustration you can get from Google. But so many people has a way of getting pictures from Google that has clear, you know, that is clear enough that is not blurry. But whenever I get my own, my own are always blurry, so I don't use it. Now, this, this is a particular um site I normally use, I love using their illustration. This, um particular site they have nice illustration i think most of them are not free most of them are not free and you can just get it you can download and then get the illustration most of them are not free. i think there is 50 50 50 is free 50 is not free and sometimes most of the ones you want to really use for your designs are not free of which you have to um pay for it but i don't know how much dollar but you have to pay for it and they have nice png illustration 2d 3d they have nice illustration of vec vectors so so they are so so fine that you can use for your design so there are a lot of them so i'm just going to just um drop some names here for us but um these are ve vectors okay so and you can get from your google too from google search google chrome google browser your browser i have to talk. most times how i do get some um illustration sites uh, i will just go to google and type a particular thing i want i'll just go to the image and then start scrolling so once i'm scrolling to look at the illustration i am click on the site link to take me to the site to go and feed my eyes so i'm going to write the last one which is the draw key there's blush there are some are plugging too so I'm going to write this, I'm going to drop this one, drop it. Drop it is a fine illustration. There is a um, um, blush. Blush is a nice um, plugin. It's a good one, um, but it's long. I use blush. Blush. Blush or something, I can't remember. But I think the last time I used the plugin, I don't know if they have actually changed, but the last time I used blush plugin, if they give you um, a human design or illustration and you you don't like the color of the hair or maybe the color of the face the color of the hand you can just go ahead and desire color so that is how it has multiple colors just the same way pngs from the sites have it has multiple colors you can just Change the colors and then play around with it to fit the Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma, I can hear you, ma. Oh, okay, okay, thank God. So if you guys want to um design your project and you know, okay, I'm going to use 
use 3D for my design. You have to use 3D or two as for this your particular design using 2G on this particular first section of your screen, using 3, 3D on this particular uh, section of your screen. It's actually not having this cool um feeling or cool vibes. So that's why I just say if you're designing with 2D, please go with 2D or throughout your project. If you're designing with 3D, go with 3D or throughout your project. So you can even go to Figma community to get the last time we were looking for an illustration for our food app, the first as that was when we are trying to text something on Figma. You 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 saw how we are trying to look for a perfect illustration and or that's how it looked like that's how it takes time to get a perfect illustration for your project. But if you know the right um sites or the right source, it's just going to help you out. So the next one we're going to create is going to be the buttons. So we're going to create all our buttons. We have the active, we have the hover, we have the um pressed button, we have the um we have the disabled button. So we are going to create them. So I'm going to duplicate this this way. I'm going to change these two buttons. So I'm going to change these two buttons. So I'm just going to leave only one and delete everything. So I'm just going to name it button. So what text are we using for our button? So let's say this is going to be button A, active. So what text are we going to use for our button? So the right text to use for your button. That's why I said, depending the kind of font you are using or which one we are creating our topography, I showed you different kinds of bot button. Jot, Inter, Roboto, uh, Montserrat, um, Red Hat. Is it Red Hat display, Rubik, and all? That I showed you how these um, fonts look like. And if you're using semi bold, you can tell that they are different looks and how their weights are actually different. So, depending on the kind of font you are using, some fonts, some, some font, if you use medium for the text as a button, you want your button text to be visible. Medium is actually perfect. It's like Roboto and Poppins, it's actually perfect. But for this particular font I'm using, semi bold is actually a good um button with sorry a good button because 40 is too much so the the size of the text i'm going to use for my button so a perfect size to use is between 16 to 8, 20. so you can use 16 you can use 18 you can use 20 but for this particular font i'm using i'm going to use 18 semi bold so uh, I'm going to use, I'm um, sorry, 20 semi bold. So I'm going to come here and go to, so I have my 20 here. So yeah, we already use, I'm going to go, I'm going to return it back. So yeah, we're using semi bold 20. So that's what I'm going to use for my button, which is heading three. So once I want to create a button, so this is going to be my active button, button active. So I've dropped my text and I'm going to use the black color for it. Or white color let's just use um white color let's just use black for um visibility sick for now so i'm going to make create a button so all I, all I have to do is just right click and then add auto layout so once i add auto layout this is how it's going to look like and i'm make sure that my text is aligned at the center okay so the button height you're going to use. so the size of a thumb of every woman being are actually different so um are different so i would recommend that you use button height of between 45 to 60. so you can just use your button height between 45 to 60. so 44 is still going to look too small 61 is actually going to look too big so if you are designing you can just design between 45 to 60. so for now i'm just going to use um 50. So I'm going to use 50 and I'm just going to use whatever, um, I'm just going to use whatever width I want to use. Okay. So the width, I'm just going to use whatever width I want to use, but for the button height, I'm going to change it to 50. Now the button width is, so there is no fixed, there is no fixed size for the width of your button. 
because sometimes your sign up button um at the at the head there or get started button at the sorry at the head uh, yes get get started button at the head there is I think going to look smaller the width is going to look small and that of the um I'm back. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. So sorry. Okay. I remember remember I said if you if you add auto layout for a particular text or anything and you want to add a P color, the default color is always white. So I'm going to add a few color for my button so it is white but we're not going to use um our active but button is not going to be white so we're going to use um our main color so i'm going to change this text to white so i'm going to scroll down and use white here so i'm going to give this a corner radius of 10. we can see so this is your how screen. my active button is. Are you serious? Ah, God. Can you see it now? Oh, yes, yes. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. 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 So I'm going to repeat what I need. So I'm going to this I'm creating my active button. So I'm going to um so I'm going to make this auto layout. So I love creating my buttons auto layout instead of grouping and frame. And like I said, it is better for you to just do your work frame than you're like when you're designing your section by section in the screen it's better to do it in frame than grouping but next week when we start creating a landing page for your web view and mobile view i'm going to show you one sweet thing about auto layout very easy very sweet very cool so once we create our button so our advice you create your button in auto layout instead of using grouping or framing bringing triangle to drop and then start adjusting and all so i'm going to create the three of them and show you um i'm going to click create the three buttons grouping auto layout and then show you the difference between the three of them so but for now i'm just going to make this um auto layout so i'm just going to use my keyboard or just come here add auto layout so if i add auto layout okay so if i add auto layout this is how it's going to look like and for my button i said we are going to use between the height of 45 to 60 so i'm going to use 60 and once i use this this is how it's going to look like so i'm just to make sure that my text is aligned at the center so once it's aligned at the center i'm going to give it um a fee color so fee color for anything you do auto layout is white but i'm going to use my main color for my active button which is the normal button i'm going to give it a corner radius of 10 and then change that white black to white so this is what I have for my button. Now let's create a button using frame. Let's see how I'm trying to create this kind of here. So I have to click inside and bring this text to the center and then give it corner radius. Let me put this 
this is the block is then very rectangle and then drop it and then move this text to the top and then I have to make the rectangle corner radius and then select this one with this and then hold these two together then group group selection then come here change this to white now I have created three buttons using auto layout, frame, and then grouping. Now let's play around with this button. Let's drag, let's drag this button. Let's like expand it. Let's drag it. Now let's see if the test is actually going to be fixed in a position. Now I'm drag, I'm go, I'm going to drag the auto layout first. I'm going to play around with the auto layout button. So I'm going to drag it. You can see how the text is just fixed at the center. So let me let me drag it this way. Let me bring it this way. Now you can see how the text is just taking its position at the center. And and then this text does not the text did not expand. It just fix at the center and it still carry the the the, the padding between the vertical and the horizontal 10 10 10 and the text is fixed at the center it even expand or adjust like this it just fix at the center now let's play around with this one with frame now even if i want to adjust this test if i adjust this test nothing is actually going to shift but now let's play with the, 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 the button we create with frames. I'm expanding it up. Now look at. Now after expanding the button, I'll have to come and start clicking inside. I start bringing it to look for the center. I start placing it at the center. And then this grouping is actually going to do times two. Like it's going to To be the one, a big problem right now. Now this is going to look like now. By the time I drag this way, I drag this way. This particular button is in, um, is in like I grouped this particular button. You can see how I have to start covering this text this way. I have to first cover this text this way. I have to now cover this text this way. So once I cover this, I am not looking for the center. So you can see how this button made in grouping is actually taking time. The same thing for the button made in frame is taking time. So that's our advice. If you're designing your button, you just use auto layers for your button. It is very, very easy. Now, if your if your um if your mentor or your guide then come into your Figma and said, Oh, Maureen, I don't like the height of this your button. Can you just please adjust it very well? You don't even need to stress yourself. All you have to do is just go to the first button you did, just make the adjustment, and it will just automatically reflect in all of them. Instead of adjusting, 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 just one move, just one drag, you do everything will just take its position. But when you use grouping or frame, you start imagine you now have to click, click, click inside to start adjusting, start adjusting. Someone who actually did um who used auto layers for his or her button is already done and is moving to the next thing. But you are still there trying to adjust, 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 and adjust up, which is why it is very, very easy to save time or your energy when you are designing. Your button just use auto layout. It is actually a perfect way. So I'm just going to change my height to 50, and then maybe I'll use um 200 here. Yeah. So I'm just going to put this in hub. So I have my um active button. So I'm going to make this in components. Um, I'm going to create this like a, a house and put all of them inside. So I'm going to come here to click create components or you can right click to create components. Yeah. So which are, whichever we work and I'm also going to come here and add variant. So once I add variant, this is how it's going to look like. So I'm going to click on this purple line here and then I'll click on this here.
change its name default to active button. Now to that example that I shared, I showed us during class. So let me open this slide and then show you those buttons. Okay. Okay, it's still loading. Let's wait for it to load. It's still loading here. So I want to show you the different kinds of button that I, I I show you in our in our class yesterday. So here we have the button active. Here we have here is going to be button hover. So this is going to be um H. I'm just going to change this A to H over H. So it's in Next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to use, I want to use this color for our thing, and I want to use this for a different color for my hover button. So I'm just going to scroll down from here, and then I'm going to use um, um, this color for hover, and then I'm going to, so I'll, let's see if the head has open. So now this, we have four button, yeah, we have the active, we have the hover, we have the press and we have the disable button. So the active button is, you know, you know when, um, let's start with disable. You have an empty screen. You have an empty screen that you're supposed to fill up your information. For example, the sign up screen on a new particular app. So if you don't, if you don't type anything on that empty screen, the button is just going to be disabled. By the time you start typing your name, the button is going to look um active now it is my product that i did this is my product id let it aside when i move my cursor you saw, you saw that it go over you get so that was, is what is called over then uh press button is when you actually Pressed, you clicked on the button or you tap on the button, it automatically change a color to show you that this button has been pressed or uh, has been pressed or clicked. So that is what it means. So we are going to create these four states of button. So we are back to our pigma. So we have the active, we have the over, we have the um, so I think this color is looking a little bit dull. So I'm going to use primary color one. So this is going to be um press button P. So this is going to be button P. So this is going to be my other button. So I'm just going to change it. So this Can you guys see my screen now?
Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So let's continue. So we've created our active hover and then we are creating our press button. So I want my press button to be that of the example I give to us. So I'm going to change my active button. So I'm going to select um, white. So first thing first is I'm going to change this my text to be uh, my primary color. So I'm going to remove this color. So I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to add stroke to it. I'm going to um, add this to it. Sorry. I'm going to add this to it. So I have this. So I'm going to create another button for this able button to. So I'm going to change this name. Elbow button. I'm going to change the A to D. Couple letter D. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity for this color. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to use this color for it. So this is what I'm just going to use. So I have my active, I have my over, I have my press, and I have my disabled button. So what I'm going to do here is I have created my button and I want to um I've created my button, different kinds of button states, and now I want it to just um interact. Like let's say I want to create a little interaction between these buttons. So I don't need to start, you know, creating multiple screens when I want to do over button or so. So all I have to do is just to bring this out here. So I'm just going to bring my active button out. So once I bring my active button out, I'm going to take it out from um, auto layout. Like, sorry, I'm going to take it out from components. So I'm just going to take it out from, so you're going to detach in, instant. So when you de detach instant, automatically it's out from components. So you're doing that, don't drag, just duplicate, you know, tap and then drag the button okay now this is how it's actually going to look display but i want to create small interactions between these buttons so this is what i'm going to do so once i duplicate this button out i'll remove from component and then i'll create another component from it i'll create another variant so once i create a variant so automatically i have so i'm just going to um Change is my button. So yeah, I have, let me just use the word. Um, let's just use um, sign up. Let's use sign up. Let's use the button. Let's use sign up for this button. So and I want the sign up when I move my cursor. It's just actually going to hover. So I'm just going to get this color. So what I'm using for my color is primary color one. So I'm just you know, you can tell this is one sweet thing about auto layout, creating your button auto layout. You can see immediately how I am typing, it's actually just adjusting that way, it's just moving. But if you're using group or frame, you have to start adjusting your button to fit the, the width of your text. But with auto layout, it will just help you automatically fill up immediately you don't even need to stress yourself so i'm going to change this color of this my button this my sign up button to to be over so i'll just come here and then move this thing to color um one and then i'll come to my prototype here so once i click on prototype i'm going to click on this and i'll come here
Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to come to this prototype here. Then I will select this. So I'll come, come to this prototype here. Click on this plot this way. You know, we already have this setting. So I'm going to click here, come to wipe over it. So it automatically take us to the second button. And so this is what we have. So I'm going to check what I've done. So I'm going to bring this, but then just drop a frame out. Let's drop a frame here. So I'm going to use. Yeah. So I'm going to select. So let's put a foam frame. So oh, I'm using iPhone 14 Plus. So I'm going to preview this. So before that, I'll have to take this button. So I'm going to drag this one. Sorry. This is the one issue I said you should not do. Don't drag. So just copy, hold your shift, and then. So just hold your shift, take the button out, and put it on your phone screen. Yeah. Okay, here, yeah. So let's wait for it to load. I don't know, maybe my network is bad, so I'm going to close it and open it again. Okay, let's try present to take us to another screen and let's see. Okay, so let's let's go back to our design. So I'm going to delete this button and I'm going to take this out. So let's just assume this is a web frame and let me bring back this button. So I'm going to Duplicate this button to this point. Web, let's just use as a web. Let's assume this is a web frame and then let's preview. I don't know what is happening here. I don't know. But let's just preview from the other side. So that's it for it to load. Okay, so while we are waiting for it to load, I need to explain to you guys the reason why um, the first one didn't work. So you cannot hover on a phone, like your phone, because you know it's, it's your phone is something you just have to hold and just click. 
is not something that you have to hover because it's not cursor. It's actually going to work. Hover is actually going to work for only for web, just like this site that we have. Yeah, just like these sites we have here. So by the time I take my cursor, it's actually going to hover. But if I open this particular site on my phone browser, I cannot hover. It will just only be displayed. So all the device is just going to do just to click on it. So it's only on a larger screen, like your phone, your computer, your television, that you can actually hover with your cursor. But for the phone, you cannot hover. Your phone is just click. You can just press, click, and go. You get that's how for the phone devices work. But for the laptop, it's actually going to hover because you have a cursor on it. I think um this site is actually doing that. I'm not sure. I think I saw it yesterday that they're, they're doing it. Okay, so let's go back to Figma and see that if this our site has opened. So it's still loading. Okay, let's, my network is bad. So I'm going to present again. And I'm going to come here to see if I can actually preview again for it to show for me this way. So I think this is this one will work for us here. Yeah? I think it's almost feed up. I uh, don't know if I can switch my network, but if I switch my network, I don't know if it's actually going to affect or affect us not hearing me again. So, but this is almost um done. So let's continue. So while we're waiting for that, then we can then create um. this hover is for us to have that interaction for our um, design. So remember when I was showing you one of my previous job I did on Figma and when my cursor moved to the um, button, it just automatically hover. But for the web view, there's nothing like hover. So I'm just creating that interaction for this active and hover button to work together. Instead of creating active, you know, in your web design, you create an active screen. You then you now create another. Let's say your your hero section that have gets started, and you have hero section A. You have another hero section, and the difference between both of them is the button. Instead of having multiple screens to create active and over button, you just need to play around with your um, button, create an interaction, and then you don't need to do too much screen. We only need this hover button when we are creating our product landing page, like our Mavi food landing page, just to tell people, oh, this is this is what we do on this particular site. Go check it out where you have to download on you from your app store. Okay, that's when we need this hover button. You get, but for um, what we just need for our mobile design is just the active button, the pressed button, and then the disabled button. Do you understand? Did they hear me? I was talking to myself. My network is so bad. I can hear you, man. Okay. My network is so bad that it didn't open. I wanted to show you something. But let's just keep trying. I just leave it to open when we continue. So that is the essence of we having this particular over button. So but for our mobile view, whether it's a mobile application or if a site you're going to open from your browser, you actually don't need over button. Over button work for a larger screen, okay? So, but for our, for all this our application, we're using our active press and um disabled button. Okay, so let's continue this. So we create our button. The next thing we are going to create, I'm going to move this guy here. I'll drop it here while we wait for it to so element. We are going to design. 
is our input field. So yesterday I showed you, I don't know if it's going to open. So yesterday I showed you, oh, thank God. So yesterday I showed you, um, I showed you how my input field, how I designed this. Okay, let's play for it. Today. So I showed you, these are the input field I, we just have to display to the, to whatever that is coming on this file to know that, okay, for my normal MP field, this is how it's going to look like. For an MP field that already has a right top, this is how it's going to look like. MP field when you are typing on it, this is how it's going to look like. MP field when you cannot change the text on it, this is how it's going to look like. MP field when there's an error, MP field when there is a, when there is a, uh, when the text inside is successfully or something, MP feed that has an icon, MP feed for text feed where you're going to like write long, you know, let's say, tell me why you love you are you something like that text field. We're going to do that. MP feed that has a um, um, drop down menu and then open the um, drop down menu. So that's what we're going to create now. So once we create that, I'm going to teach you how to do this the same way we did for the button so we're going to create our display for mp3 let's see if this has actually opened okay still loading let's continue so i'm going to delete all these things here how many buttons do we have three two so i'm going to delete i'm going to delete um all this we already have here and i will change this to mp3 So I'm just going to change this to input field. So once I change this to input field now, now what is the text? So I'm going to come here to just throw this text here, and then I will drag it this way. So I'm going to drop this text here. So what is the right text that we're going to use for our input field? So I'm going to come here to select um, my text. I'm going to use um 20 for my 20 semi bold for my um text type to let's say let me just write a word first name let's just use first name for it but instead of writing first name i'm just going to use level or title so i'm going to use level i'm going to duplicate this text here so i'm going to reduce it to the inside text so this is what we are creating here so this is what we are trying to create here. So I'm going to come back here to um, change this to regular. So this is going to be my text. So I'm going to change this level to be my main black or brown. So let's see. Let's use let's use brown. No, let's use black. Let's use black. Then let's use um um light gray. And let's create this in auto layout. So I'll just do shift A. So once I do shift A, I'm going to drag it this way. Remember I'm using, my button height is 50. So my text height is also going to be 50. So I'm just going to come here to um, change it to 50 from 37 to 50. So once I change to 37 to 50, you can see the, as I'm dragging this button, the text is just, moving that way so i'll come here and i will just come to my auto setting and then move this to the left hand side so once i move to the left hand side this is how it's going to look like so i'll just come here to hold this content so when i hold this is how it's going to look i'm going to return it so i just going to leave this button text this way and then i'm going to give it a corner radius of 10 since i'm using corner radius of 10 for my button and then i'm going to add um, a stroke so this is going to be the lighter shade but i'm going to reduce it to be um 0 0.7 so once it's 0 0.7 i'm just going to drag it a little bit i can adjust it in my design if i want to so this is the first mp speed we are trying to to create something like this. So we've done this. So I'm just going to add auto layouts to this both of them. So once I add auto layout, I'm going to come back to this particular um, first box 
and then I'll scroll, come back to my auto layout and make sure that it is already in fill container. So that once I just drag this input field into my um into my chrome frame. Like I, I don't need to start adjusting, adjusting. All I have to do is either I'm using or I just reduce this display. Okay. So I'm going to repeat what I did so that everybody will actually catch up. So I'm going to remove this from um, auto layout. So I have, let me remove this also from auto layout. So I have dropped my text. So what I'm using is 14 regular. So that's what I'm using, small body text, 14 regular. And I'm going to make this the text in add it in auto layout. So I've added it in auto layout. So I've added it in auto layout. So once I add auto layout, this is what it's going to display. I'm going to use I'm using button height of 50. So I'm going to use my input height of 52. I'm going to drag it this way. Just any size you just want to use for now. So I'm going to push this text to the left hand side. So I'll just come here, align to the left. So once I align to the left, this is what I want. It's perfect this way. I'm going to give it corner radius of 10. So I'm going to give it a stroke. If I click out, this is how it look like. It won't tell there is actually a box here. So I'm going to give it a um, stroke of the light. I'm going to use my lighter gray. That's what I'm going to use for my stroke. Uh, you can use one. But to me, I don't want to use one. I want to use 0 0.7 or 0 0.8. So let's use 0 0.8. So that's what I'm going to use. So once I'm done, I'm going to hold with my level together and make it clear. So once I make auto layers, I'm going to reduce the space. Now the space here is 16. I don't want to use 16. I want to use um, 10. I want to use 10 for it. So that is what I want. Then I will have to click inside to capture this first frame. And then I will scroll here and come to this frame and make sure that the frame is actually horizontal. Now the horizontal sizing is actually fit container. So once it's fit container, I can just, now let's say um, I'm done creating this. I'll just drag it and put in my phone, phone frame I'm using. And then I can choose to drag it to fill it up or I can choose to reduce it. So you don't have to start clicking inside and start adjusting, adjusting. Since we've already done it on auto layout, it just helps you to work better. So the next one I'm going to design is, this is actually the normal input field. So the next one I'm going to design is going to be when a user is typing. So I'm going to just duplicate this, come here. So I'm going to use, um, so I'm going to make this um, tick, not, let's, then this is what we have to use one. And I'm going to change the color to brown. So anyhow you want to use, you want to use your color, anyhow you just want to use it, or just make the input field clear enough. So yeah, I'm just going to use, um, when a user is typing, sorry, when a user is typing, yeah. I'm going to make this text to be dark or, or let's use black to show that a user is actually typing. So once you are doing so I actually forgot to do something. I actually forgot to place all of them in auto layout. So I'm just oh, sorry in components. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up here and hold this and then make this um component just the same way we create a component for the button so i'm just going to create a component and add another variant to duplicate that i'm going to hold the whole of this purple come to this place and change the property name to input field input field and then the first one is going to be um normal anything you want to call it normal um the second one which is this one i'm going to design i'm just going to do what i already did here so i'm just going to do that quickly so this is going to be like this and i'm going to change the color to be black i'm going to hold this to be um brown 
Now I've already created this. I'm going to make this one to be visible enough. Then I'm going to hold this. So I'm going to hold um this and then I'll have to create another variant. So once I create another variant, I can just go ahead and delete this since I'm not using it. So I'm going to type to um how it look like when a user is done typing. So I'm going to type my name. So let's see for a user has a long name. So I'm going to change this from regular to this. This is actually looking too big. I was using this. I, I wanted to use 16 medium, but it's looking big. So I'm just going to use 14 medium and I'm going to take this out back to this. So I'm going to use for light. This is how it's going to look like. Let's use lighter gray and let's return this back to 0 0.8. So this is how it's going to look like when a user is about to type. When a user starts typing, this is how it's going to look like. When a user is done typing, this is how it's going to look like. Then I'm going to create for um so I'm going to create now before I continue, I'll have to come back here to rename all this label. So this is normal. This is um um when typing, you can just put typing. This is um field don't type in. This I want to use the word field don't type in. So the next one I'm going to create is an um input field that has um an icon. Let's say calendar drop down. So I think I will have to do um a calendar like date of birth icon. So this is going to be so I, I just have to just duplicate this. So I'm just going to come here to um here is going to be select dates. So this is going to be select dates. So now let's get a dates icon. So we're just going to use from the icon pack that we are going to use so you're just going to drop the icon just like what i did here i'm using um so my icon pack i'm using here i'm using font on some icon of which i just dropped all of them here for this particular project i'm doing are you guys still with me yes we are okay i was scared okay so um I, I, so this this particular project i'm working on i'm using font on some icon as the kind of icon i want to use for this project so but on your own project what you're just going to do you're just going to drop the icon pack that you are using but for this this i'm just showing us an example where we can get illustrations on icon so let's assume that in this project we are using iconify so i'm going to um Get open my plugin. I just plug in open. This time my network is bad. If it doesn't open, we'll have to go and copy um an icon I already have and just put it here. So let's wait a few minutes and see if it will open. Okay, since it doesn't open, and because of time, I will just have to copy um, an icon from one of my old projects. So I'm just just borrow this icon. So I'm just going to copy this icon and come back here. So I'm going to paste this icon here. Let me paste it here first. Paste it. So I'm going to paste this icon here. And now this is one about this icon. This icon, you have to download and actually use it. You can see that I don't have the font for my Figma. That's why I'm showing you this um, missing font. These following fonts are not available. Choose the replacement of fonts in order to edit the text. But I don't want to edit it. I want to use it. So if I want to use it on my project, I will have to go and download this fonts or some um, fonts. So I'm going to add this 
the um icon yeah so what i'm going to do i'll paste it here let's say you've downloaded the icon you know you've done everything you want to do you just have to drag it and bring it inside this box now it's showing you where it's actually going to stage but if you want to ignore this also the app you can ignore but then i'll let i will show you how to ignore the for now i'm just going to paste it inside so once you paste this inside this is how it's going to look like but we want this this is when this we want to add this this error is coming because of the plugin so being open because of bad network so we are going to move so we are going to move this um icon to this place so what are we going to do we're just going to hold this select dates so we're going to hold this select date as a text and this icon as a text and then we are going to make it auto layout so once we make it auto layout, we're just going to drag it this way. So once we drag it this way, we're going to come here and then make it pick container. So once we make it pick container, so once we come here to make it pick container, I want to I want this text to get to this point, okay. So once we make it fit container, we can come here to make it hot, hot, and see how it turns out to be. And then um, this is already filled. And now if I take, now let me show you one magic about this auto layout now. We already have icon in this. And let's say the the, the screen, like the, the model I want to, or any screen I want to add this, I just want to reduce this input feed. When I just duplicate it out here, so we just have to drag it. Everything we just adjust. That is one sweet thing about auto layout. Everything we just adjust this way. Consider everything just adjust. That is one thing about auto layout. So everything about this, I just everything I've been putting in auto layout because it will make my work so so easy and very very fast. Okay, but have it at the back of your mind that auto layout can be very very tricky. Like it can be very very tricky, and it will just messed up your work that you might even question yourself what are you even doing but if you know how to do it step by step small small don't rush check if this is actually working before you move to the next stage you need to be you need to confirm that okay this is actually the right position before you move to the next stage that's one thing about auto layout you don't need to rush because i want to get to this point no you don't need to rush you need to do it step by step check that everything okay this particular thing is in big container before you move to the next stage. Now we're going to continue. Now let's continue. Let's create an input feed that shows that this information on this screen is error and this information on this screen is successful. So I'm going to duplicate this particular one. I already have um name. So I'm just going to duplicate this. So this is going to be field and this is going to be um dates. Let's just call it date, date input feed, dates, date input. And this is going to be error. So this is one thing that we need to calm very, very, like we need to calm down now to create this. Now this is because this is what we already have. We want to add this text here. We want to add this text here. So how are we going to do that? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back to my design. I don't want to add anything inside. I just want to add it here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to, so I'm going to click on this. I'll just have to duplicate, Ctrl D, Command D. And then I'll move this text. So I'll move this one to this place. So once I move it, this is how it's actually going to look like. So I'm going to click on this level here. Yeah? And then I'll come here to select my tiny text. So this is going to be this. And this is going to be, um, let's say, uh, pretty incorrect, incorrect, incorrect in address. Let's just use this one. Let's use this right of incorrect email address. And then I'm thinking of ad making, okay, this is actually okay. Now, if this text is actually looking too big, you can go ahead and create, um, like, you know, light. This is regular. If it's too big, you can go ahead and create um, light size 12 and add it in your text. 
but I think I'm okay with this regular I'm using here. So I'm going to come here and use my state color red. Yeah. So this is what I have. And then I will have to hold this input field and this one together and then make it auto layout. So once I make it auto layout, I'm going to reduce this space. I'm not going to use 10. It's too much. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use two for it. So, but I want to, I want this, I don't like how this text is looking here. So I'll have to go back to my text style to create another text style. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to duplicate this. So my, this is going to be, um, this is going to be, this is going to, so I'm going to take this out here. So I'm going to select, um, let's see light, it's actually looking. So I'm going to come here. Let's see if they have this uh, Italian, Italian context. Yeah, I think this is okay like this. Okay, so I'm just going to use extra lights here and I'm going to change this to extra lights. And then I'm going to create this as one of my, you know, text size so this is going to be um thin body this is going to be thin body thin body um extra light so this is going to be et or you can just put it extra lights so depending how you want to write it so i'm going to just put it et which is actually the way i want to understand so i've created so i'm going to come here now and i'm going to open everything to um Put it inside so i'm going to click here so i'm going to drag it scroll and then add it here so once i add it here i've already added it as part of my local size and then i'll come to this place and then use it for my input speed so the reason why i have to add that one i just want this test to be you know very tiny small to show that okay this is an, actually an error so that's the pattern i want to so i'm just going to use extra light so this is how i want it but if you don't want to add this, you can just go ahead and just make this video be red, depending the kind of MP3 you want to design. So I'm just going to um, duplicate this I've already created here. So I'm going to duplicate this, you know, this I'm going to just show, change this to be correct or success or whatever you want to use. So I'm just going to go back and then change this to success to be green. Yes, so this is what I already have. So the next one I'm going to create is going to be and um the next one I'm going to create is going to be uh with drop down. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag it this way. So I'm going to create everything inside this component. So if you create anything outside the component and you bring it inside here, it won't work except you're bringing it inside any of these input three. That's when it's going to work. Okay. So I'm just going to um duplicate this one. Yeah, I'm going to click on add variant. So I'm going to add variant. So I'm just going to go and copy, you know, when we try to open our um, plugin, it was not, it, it, it was showing us error because of bad network. I'm just going to copy this drop down menu here or drop down icon here. So I'm going to copy this and then I will come to here and then I will add it. So I'm just going to come here and then add it. So once I add it, it's automatically going to chase, chase this um, calendar from that position and place it at the center. But all I have to do is just to click on it and I'm going to delete it. So once you're doing that, make sure that the color actually tally with the color that you are using for your design. So yeah, I'm using my previous design. So I'm going to change this I, um, calendar color to my own color. So I'm going to use this, my black. And I'm going to use for my drop down, I'm going to use my black as well. So I'm going to use my black. So now I want to, now I've created my drop. So this is going to be, so I'm going to change this to be, to select. So this is going to be select. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the one that has, you know, menu. So I'm just going to create this again and I will come here. So I'm just going to change the position of this to zero. So I'm just going to change this to zero. So you can come here to change it. So this is going to be like this. So this is going to, so I'm going to take out this 0.51 and use 90. This is what we have. No. I'm supposed to face the other way, not the same way I just brought it out. I'm just going to take out the 19 and take this off to show me the drop menu. So I'm going to create um, something. So this is what I'm trying to create. So this is, I've created, I've created this first one. So I'm trying to create this other second, yeah, this menu item or menu list. So I'm just going to come back to my design and then let's use, let's just borrow this text. Okay, so I just I can just come here, click on this, drop it here, and call it menu, menu um item. So this is actually picking my last text. So I'm going to use uh okay, let's use 14 medium. So I'm going to use 14 medium. We can just add it, you know, just, just a dummy something I'm trying to create. So I'm just going to make it um auto layout. So I'm going to add auto layout. So the width of what I'm designing here is going to be so I'm designing this is 477. So I'm just going to make it here 477. And I'm going to push this to the line to the left. I'm going to give it a lighter pink color. So I'm just going to come here, select this gray here. So if we don't have this gray, you just go there to add this gray. So I'm just going to duplicate this, duplicate, sorry, going to duplicate this. Okay, I got outside network. Can you see my screen now? Okay, okay. Um, Shira, can you see my screen? Oluchi, can you see my screen now? Yes, ma, I can see your screen. All right, okay, let's continue. Okay, sorry about the whole network. Don't worry, I'm going to send court one video and this video to get. I'm going to send court one video to Google Classroom and then send this one so that you guys will watch and understand. Okay, so sorry for the whole network messed up. So let's just undo this. So I'm just going to undo, you know, a few things I did here. Okay, so you know you will duplicate this one. We created auto layers for it. We duplicated it. So I'm just going to highlight this one, and then I'll take out the fee color. So I'm going to take out the fee color, and I will hold this together, and then make it auto layout. So once I make it auto layout, I'm just going to. Uh, this is what we are trying to create. We're getting this as an inspiration. So we're going to have space here, you know. So, and I want to use this lighter color. So that means I'll have to come back here and use my, um, so if I add, if I don't want to use my lighter color, I'll have to go and add um, the lighter color I just used. It. So I'm not going to use this. So I'm just going to make it a little bit light like this. So I'm going to add it in my design, okay? My color styles. Color styles, so I'm just going to add this. So I'm just going to use this one, and I'm going to um 
add padding. So now we don't have any padding at all. So I'm going to add vertical and horizontal padding. So what we have here is zero. So let me bring it down here so that we can see what we are doing. So I'm going to bring it this way and I'm going to add padding to it. So the padding I'm going to use is going to be 20. I'm going to add both. Here it's going to be 10. So I have created this. So this is what I'm trying to create here. So which of which will achieve it. Now, once I add padding, it does that everything inside has actually adjusted. So I'm going to zoom now. This is padding here and padding here. So if you don't want to use 20, if 20 is actually too much for you, you can just come here and then use 10 to just make it to be the same way. Trust me, it's corner radius. So I'm just going to add corner radius of 10 and I'm going to give it a stroke to show that it is actually a, um, a drop down menu. So I'm going to use my stroke for lighter gray like this. So this is what I have achieved. So what I'm going to do here is just now if you drag this thing inside here, it will not automatically it's it's it like just like when you give something to let's say you give fish food to swallow. It's actually not going to take it as part of the component. But if you drag it and put it inside this particular Level this particular one, this particular one, I just click now. It will automatically out of this. Yeah. So, this is what we are going to do. We are going to click on this. We're going to bring it here like this. So, if you drop it like this, it automatically not take this way. You see that this is the component here. Yeah? If I close it like this, you see that it's still standing on its own. So, what we are going to do, if you try to put it inside and it didn't take it, take in, so what we are going to do, just come here, copy it, click on this particular element and then paste on paste it so once you paste it this is how automatically it becomes and then you can go ahead and delete this so if you have this and if you if you've done this and then you're not comfortable with this spacing here yeah? so you can just come here zoom in, code this um box the same way we did, did for this those text hold this box here hold this one together then make it auto layout and come here, here and then reduce the span to maybe whatever number you're comfortable with and then use five. Be perfect for me. So then we have, then I'm going to come back here. So here is going to be, uh, so we stop here for date infuse. We stop here for, this is going to be error. So this is going to be, um, Success. This is going to be um, drop down, drop down, and this second one is going to be open. Let's just call it open menu or menu. I want to give menu list, menu item. Whatever. So I'm just going to take take out the open. So, this is, so we've created the kind of label that we are going to um, use. Now, if we want to create that interaction, the same thing we did for the button. So I'm just going to take this out here. And once I take it out like this, I'm just going to, let's increase this frame a little bit more. So I just pray these things, this thing will work in loading. And if you're going to add maybe icon inside your body, maybe, you know, you know, we're designing a food app where you need to call the driver or call the dispatch rider and you need an icon, maybe to send this thing to the driver, to the rider, or you need to call the rider. And you know this particular icon is going to have, I know this particular button is going to have icon. We're just going to do the same thing, the way we added icon inside that MP3. All you have to do is just to come here, for instance, um, just let's use this one, and then you duplicate it here, and let's get, let's borrow call icon. I don't know if this is actually going to open different page, but let's just go to the one that is already open. Since network has given us the privilege to 
since the stuff is not giving us the privilege to get our desired icon so i'm just going to see if i can see um a phone icon here or message icon Okay, I think there's no call icon here, and there's not even a message icon here. But let's use um, let's just use any icon. Okay, I've seen message icon. So let's just use now. Let, let's put this message icon. So let's copy this message icon. Let's assume let's assume we want to create a button that has icon in it. So this is what we are going to do. You just come to this button here. So you just come to duplicate, you know, add variant to inside the components. Just hold the button and then paste your icon inside. This is how it's going to be. No, it's not supposed to be there. This is where I'm clicking. And then you paste it. This is where it actually went to. So you can just bring it out. So when you bring it out, you're just going to hold. I don't know what is going on. Maybe because this thing is actually in components. That's why I'm actually not taking it in. But if it's just normal, this because this if you check now, you see that all of them is actually in component. That's why it's not taking it in. Or if you use the normal icon. So let's see if any icon plugin is actually going to open for us. I just pray it opens. Let's try one. Loading. It's actually loading. Let's see if it will open for us. Thank God. Okay. Let's use, let's say, pop. Okay. So let's just take any icon at all. So we are going to use this icon, this one. So let's drag this one out. Let's close this and let's reduce the icon size. So we are going to use 24, 24. So I'm going to come here, hold on this vector here, and then I'll reduce the stroke. So the reason why it's like this is because of it is in stroke. So I'm going to use four. So four is too thick. So I'm going to use two. So two is okay. I'm going to come back and hold my frame. Remember the way I taught you how to use your icon. So I'm going to use um black. Okay, let's just use now when we are done we can change now i'm going to bring this icon inside this particular button like this then i'll paste it so once i paste it you can come here to adjust it why not taking that other icon because it is in component component and component doesn't work together red wire and red wire doesn't work together that was why it's not accepting but if it's anything that is not at all in component it will just automatically swallow it so i'm going to move this um icon the text to be here so the text is just going to be here and i'm going to be like yeah it should be like core maybe you want to add cats uh, maybe you want to add cats uh, and show your, your food cats icon you know, you can just add the icon like that, you know, add to carts where you want to add or food basket or whatever icon you want to add. This is how it will look like. And then you can just go back to your desired color that you're using. And then you change this to your right. And then this is what we have already. Okay, so we created those buttons. Say you add, add um, carts, any icon at all. This is how you just do it to display all the kinds of buttons that you use on your project. So let's 
So we've created the same thing we did for the button. That's the same thing we've do. We've done for our input field where we created all the kinds of input field that we are going to use for our design. So while you are designing and you notice that you're going to use another MP3 that is not here, you're going to add that. So just come here. Maybe you want to add, um, duplicate this, add your eye icon, okay? If you want to add for the password, you know, the, the, yeah, there's no password. So you just come here and add your eye icon. So I'm going to, there's no way for me to preview this because the first one I tried to preview is not working. So once we start designing, um, once we start designing our landing page, our authentication page, our all those designs for the web and the mobile view, I'm going to show you how to in, do your interaction, your element interaction, your MP field to interact with your MP field, the button MP field are the elements we can use for creating our design projects. So feel free to ask your questions.